How many of you carry a firearm every day? If you don't, that's something you need to change. As of the time of this video, there are over 21 million concealed carry permits issued in the United States, and 25 states have permitless carry. Currently, we are at a time where it's an all-time high for concealed carry, and it's one of the easiest it's ever been to actually get a concealed carry permit or to start concealed carrying in most states. The reality is, as a prepper, you need to be one of those people out there carrying every day. After all, a big part of prepping is making sure that you're able to deal with anything life throws your way. On this channel, though, SHTF is the name of the game, and one SHTF scenario that we really want to be discussing that I feel gets glazed over too much by other channels or not really talked about is active killer events. Um, it's one of those ones where even though people don't want to talk about it, it, it's a fact of life. They do happen. And if you encounter this scenario, you need to be able to defend yourself. And while using a firearm is always going to be that last resort, it is the most effective tool you can have at your disposal to stop a threat to your life. The grim reality is that when you're in an immediate danger, you're going to be your own first responder, and you need to be properly equipped for that role. It will make a difference between life or death, after all, whether or not you can face that. In an act of killer events, even the best trained police departments are still going to be minutes away when the seconds matter, and unfortunately, we're seeing more and more instances of, well, lackluster responses by incompetent departments. We saw this in active killer situations in places such as Uvalde, Texas, and Parkland, Florida, to name a few. While those situations are rare, and there are many brave men and women out there in law enforcement who will respond properly, the possibility of happening is still there. And hoping law enforcement arrives in time to save your life just isn't a luxury you can afford. The best way to start being equipped to protect yourself is by picking up a handgun and getting your concealed carry permit if your state requires one, and carrying that gun on a regular basis. As a prepper, this should be your first step regardless when it comes to venturing into firearms and self-defense. And honestly, it should take precedence over buying a rifle or tactical gear. The reality is you're far more likely to encounter a scenario that's going to make use out of that concealed handgun than you ever would that rifle or tactical gear. The first thing you need to consider is what firearm you're going to be carrying. There are plenty of people that recommend a one-size-fits-all approach, and that just isn't something that should be followed. Fact is, a Glock 19 or a Compact 38 Special Revolver, which for some reason seem to be the two most common options you hear, just aren't going to work for everyone. I recommend going out to a gun range that has some rental guns you can try out, or get out on the range with a friend that has several different options and try shooting with them. I promise you, if you have any friends that shoot, they're going to be more than likely ecstatic to help you out with this. Make sure the firearm that you pick out is one that fits comfortably in your hands, and it's something that actually feels comfortable for you to control and shoot. A few additional criteria I would push you to consider as well, though, would be making sure you choose a firearm that's chambered in at least 9mm and picking a firearm that's magazine-fed. I would specifically avoid any firearms chambered in any sort of uncommon calibers. A couple examples that we have here today for concealed handguns is going to be, for example, a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm. These are very common. They have several different versions of these out here, and these are honestly probably the most common compact slimline concealed handgun you would see out there on the market. You also do have stuff like a Glock 43X. Um, I don't happen to have one of those in here, but they're similar in size to this. The most common one you see is a Glock 19. This is a uh, 15 plus one size handgun. This is a technically not a full size, but pretty darn close to a full size handgun that you're going to find out there. So that's another example you see carried quite a bit personally. And if you've seen my EDC carry video, I carry an MP 2.0 with a light on here, and I carry that in an outside the waistband holster. We'll talk about holsters here in a minute, but that's my personal carry gun. You know, make sure you go out there and you find what's, again, that most comfortable in your hands and look at the different options available. What I've just shown you here today is a very slim amount of options compared to the plethora that's out there that would still meet that criteria I talked about and may work for you. Once you've narrowed it down and selected the gun you're comfortable carrying, the next thing you need to consider is how you'll actually carry it on your person. There are many different ways on how you can do this. Personally, I carry the majority of the time, and that's outside the waistband holster, which is this guy right here. But other options that would typically work as well is going to be an appendix carry on your strong side, um, or, or sorry, an appendix carry or a strong side inside the waistband holster, a belly band, or in some cases a shoulder holster. For concealed carry, I would personally avoid carrying in the small of the back, pocket carrying, cross draw, or carrying off the body in a concealed carry bag if possible. Each of those mentioned positions come with some major drawbacks that could take, a, honestly, a whole video on their own to talk about. 
You probably will go through a couple different holsters though before you eventually decide on which one's gonna work best for you. And that's all right and honestly something you should just expect. The most important part is you do find a solution that's going to be comfortable for you so you're actually carrying that gun consistently. Once you work that out, I would also look into carrying an additional magazine and look at different ways to do that. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really good habit to be into, so that's something I would make sure you're doing. Personally, I always just carry a extra magazine on my offside and an outside the waistband holster. You just wear baggy clothes, it'll cover it up. But you do have different options. They do make inside the waistband holsters for magazines, and they do also have uh, magazine holders that will attach to holsters. So T-Rex Arms, for example, has a really common system called their sidecar system. So if you're looking to spend a little bit more when you get to that holster portion, they would be a good one to check out. In front of me, I have an Alien Gear holster, and this is a hybrid solution. So this is going to be really comfortable to carry. Um, it's going to sit a little bit deeper. And then this one over here is just a locally made full Kydex holster. These are really easy to slip on and off. Or Alien Gears, for example, not so much if you're wanting to do inside the waistband. But this is one you could definitely appendix carry if you wanted to, or you can carry it on your strong side. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, yeah, this particular of the options I mentioned not to carry is that small of the back. Again, I see a lot of people carrying the small of the back, but when you're carrying and you have, say, a holster like this sitting in the small of your back with your gun in it, if you fall or if you get into a fight with somebody, because unfortunately that stuff can happen if you're in volatile situations, it's, it can cause some damage. The reality is you don't want to fall on your back, have your gun behind your back, or even, you know, you're just slipping on the ice or something like that and fall on it. It can cause severe damage to your spine. That's the main thing. I, I want to throw out there that specific position just because I know there's going to be somebody that drops a comment and says, but I love carrying in the small of the back, but there's a really good reason not to. And similar stuff goes with those other positions. I don't want to get into it too much and take too much time away from everything else, but all those other positions do have some major cons to carrying in them, whether it be a lack of accessibility or even a lack of control over the handgun itself. So that's why we chose the specific positions we mentioned and recommend you carry in those specific positions. But moving onward here, now that you've decided what you're going to carry and you figured out how you're going to be carrying it, the next step you need to do is go out there and get some training and if it's applicable, get your permit. Many states that do require the permit to carry also do require a little bit of basic training, but usually that basic training that's required really doesn't cover much more than some state laws. I'd recommend always going out there and seeking actual training courses that go in depth on the basic operations of a handgun and that focus on improving your marksmanship, weapons handling ability, and truly go in depth with you on some scenario training and talk about a use of force continuum that you're gonna see in most states. Um, so that training is gonna help you a lot if you go out there and locate it. I will say there are several different sources online, but some of those online sources you see that talk about training may go over some state specific laws or criteria. So that's one thing to be a little bit wary of if you're watching videos online, because the one law that applies in Iowa or Nebraska isn't gonna apply the same in a place like say Nevada or Arizona. So keep that in mind when you're watching online videos that they start digging into things about what's lawful and not lawful when concealed carrying. Um, if you follow through with these steps though, congratulations. That means you've actually made it to this point where you should be carrying your firearm on a normal basis. Make sure you keep carrying and seek out more training opportunities when you can. There's no such thing as too much training. If you like the content here, hit that like and subscribe button down below. But most of all, stay safe and stay prepared.